technology and science. We will be solving 9701 A levels chemistry paper 5 and uh, in this video we will be solving uh, October November series 2022 and we have already solved question 1 and in this video we will be solving question 2 along with that we will be also seeing the tips to solve the other paper 5s in general we will also see what are variables in the experiments when we uh, decide and plan uh, experiment what are the measurements we need to take during such experiments what are the errors and accuracies and what is the percentage error uh, all these points we will cover along with solving question 2 in this video so let's start with question 2 where it says it is possible to measure the rate at which potassium manganate 7 KMnO4 with the molecular mass 15 diffuses through a permeable gel using the following method now here is a petri dish containing permeable gel and at the center there is a hole which we can see here and this hole contains an aqueous potassium manganate 7 sample. You can always pause the video and read the steps which is given here. Yeah, there is a correction the MR molecular mass is 158 so you can read these uh, steps and let's go ahead with the next part of the question where we are given a table which describes the time that every three minutes that the measurements are done. What are the measurements done? The diameter of the colored spot in centimeter cube is measured. So first one was 0 0.5 centimeter cube which we have filled with the potassium magnet. There was a hole in the petri dish which contained uh, aqueous potassium magnet and had a diameter of 0.5. So initial increase, the diameter increase, the initial increase was 0 but after 3 minutes the diameter of the colored spot diffused to and reached the diameter of 1.1 centimeter and then the increase so that you can say the subtraction of these two values is 0 0.6 centimeter. So this is how the whole table is given till 36 minutes we can see here that every 3 minutes the measurements were done till 36 minutes were reached. So let's go ahead and what does it say? We can see here that we are given a grid to plot a graph on the grid to show the relationship between the diameter increase of the colored spot and time. Use a cross to plot each data point and draw a line of best fit. Now what I am doing is I am pausing the video and I am going to plot a grid, a graph for you just within few minutes. Uh, so here are the points which are plotted from the data given in the table and we are supposed to draw a line of best fit. I have tried my level best to draw a line or uh, actually a curve of a best fit but as I am drawing it on a screen it's not a perfect but you need to understand that it has to be with a pencil with a very smooth curve. My curve has gone a zigzag which is not allowed. So you won't get one mark for the curve but if you draw it smoothly through the points then you will get two marks because this is a two marks plot of a graph. Now here you can see that this is one of the anomaly result which is at say 18 uh, minutes. So this is the point which is out of the curve and we consider it as an anomaly. So the next part you can see here in the question says on the graph circle the point which you believe to be the most anomalous and this we have already done now the question follows says suggest a possible explanation for this anomaly result. Now we had seen that the diameter difference was less than the required because the point was below the curve. So you can say that the measurement was done before time the measurement was done before time before the actual time so that may be the reason that the diameter measured was less and that's why the difference in the diameter was also measured less now draw a suitable tangent to a line at time 15 minutes 
calculate the gradient of your tangent state both sets of coordinates used in your calculation the stated coordinates must be from your tangent give the gradient to three significant figures so at 15 minutes we are supposed to draw a tangent now let's do that so here is a tangent at 15 minutes that is this point and i have also drawn a triangle to get the coordinates of the two points which we are going to consider for our gradient and that is seven minutes on x-axis and 1.8 on the y-axis and on the other point is 23 minutes and it is 3.45 diameter so these are the two coordinates let's go ahead with the calculation of these two coordinates the two coordinates are 7 and 1.8 and the second coordinate was 23 and 3.45 centimeter diameter. So the gradient for this is and we get an approximate gradient of 1.1 centimeter per minute. So here are the C part done where we have calculated, drawn a tangent, calculated the gradient with the help of two coordinates. Now the next sub question says select appropriate data from the table 2.1 and calculate the average rate of diffusion of potassium manganate in centimeter per minute. Now I'm sorry I need to check give the gradient to three significant figures so we need to be specific and the answer was 1.03 to be very specific. So this is our gradient now select the appropriate data now we have already read the question if we calculate that then it's going to be 3.6 divided by 30 because after 30 minutes the diffusion stopped. And the distance traveled maximum was 3.6 so the average rate of diffusion is going to be 0.12 centimeter per minute now next sub question says i hope you understood how to calculate the average rate of diffusion we have seen the difference in the um, uh, diameter that was reached maximum 3.6 and after 30 minutes the diffusion stopped and so we have divided it by 30 and the answer is 0.12 now identify the independent variable in this experiment so what are we changing the factor which we are changing is the independent variable so factor changing in this is the time we are measuring the diameter at various times so the factor changing is time and that is in minutes but here we are not supposed to give the unit so we are not writing the unit so independent variable is time such as the how the experiment could be made to be more reliable so the only way to make the experiment more reliable is to repeat the experiment repeat the experiment and take the readings to show that the readings are reliable another compound now let's go ahead with the next sub question it says that another compound of potassium which is colored is potassium dichromate which has the molecular mass of 294 now this compound is corrosive when aqueous it is possible to use the method described earlier to determine the rate of diffusion of potassium dichromate also predict how the graph obtained for potassium dichromate would differ from that obtained for potassium manganate and explain your answer now as the question says what will be the change in the graph so if we are talking about a graph we need to talk about the curve which we have drawn in the graph and the curve have a gradient so what we can say is that the gradient will be lower why the gradient will be lower because the molecular mass of potassium dichromate is higher molecular mass is higher and because of that the rate of diffusion will be slower the rate of diffusion is slower and that is the reason the gradient would go low so this is the main reason that potassium dichromate will have a lower gradient the rate of diffusion is less 
Apart from temperature, state 1 variable which must be controlled when comparing the rate of diffusion of potassium dichromate and potassium manganate. Now as we know that we have used the aqueous solutions of potassium manganate and dichromate so the most important part is the concentration if we are checking the rate of diffusion of both the compounds. Concentration should remain constant if we are comparing with the constant temperature okay the next part is other than wearing eye protection state one safety precaution the student should take if they were to use potassium dichromate now as it is already shown here that potassium dichromate is corrosive so it can harm the skin so what we can write is that wear or use chemical resistant gloves chemical resistant gloves because as it is corrosive so it may harm the skin while using so the gloves are necessary another student suggests that to compare the rates of diffusion between potassium dichromate and potassium magnet it would be easier to place a solid crystals of each of these compounds into the holes in two petri dishes of permeable gel suggest two practical problems that this would cause now, the main practical problem for this is that if we use solid crystal the rate of diffusion of solid crystal is very very slow so it would take very longer so rate of diffusion is very slow if we use solid crystals the second reason may be that the uh, compound may not be soluble in the gel we are using compound may not be soluble in the gel may not be soluble in the gel which we are using so uh, that is another reason so the compound may not diffuse at all so these are the two reasons you may mention few more reasons like if we are using solid crystals the size of the crystals may not be same or we need to use the same mass of crystals but then crystal size will change so size of crystal may change because we may not take exactly same size of crystals that is very difficult to take same size crystals so size of crystal again may be a third problem so out of these three you can mention any two because it carries two marks and you are supposed to mention two practical difficulties so in this video what we have learned we have learned about independent variables and dependent variables so you can say that we have learned about variables we have learnt about measurements that what measurements we should do and what we should take care suppose we are talking about the practical problems then we should understand that what may be the practical problems and what may be the ease during the practicals okay few more things which we have learnt is plotting a graph and finding a gradient plotting a graph and finding a gradient this is what we have learned in this and in our earlier video of question one also we had learned about the errors and accuracies so i hope this point is very clear you might find paper five much easy by keeping such points if you know all these points how to plot a graph how to do the measurements what are the variables we should be taking care then it's very easy to solve paper five